Next, I'm going to show you how to create your own class so that you can apply that information to different elements in your page. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is notice here I've got this little navigation section right here. And I don't have a particular class going for it. Currently, these are um, active hyperlinks or just text pieces. So in terms of considering the HTML tags here, while I could apply an attribute or change the attributes of the active hyperlinks, because it's a combination of paragraph tags, which is this little thing here, and active hyperlink pieces over here, in my mind, it's easier just to simply apply a class. Now, the building of a class is separate from the actual highlighting text and applying that class. So let's go ahead and build a class. I'm going to go ahead and um, come down here to my property inspector and click on CSS. I could highlight this and go ahead and start applying different attributes here and it would immediately take me into the point where I have to name that class. So I'm going to go ahead and do it that way this time. But keep in mind that there are multiple ways to create a class. So I'm going to be kind of doing the creation of a class as well as applying that class all in one shot. Here I am going to, first of all, I don't want a rule of text left here. I don't want to apply this particular set of attributes all to that previous class of text one. So I'm going to click here and choose new CSS style rule. I want this to be a brand new rule. And I'm going to choose a font of, um, go with a nice sans serif combination. And notice that it immediately takes me into naming this particular rule. Now, I had some information in there, but I want this to be a nice, simple class. So I can, originally it was set on the compound, which gave me a couple of different things, but I want this to be a simple class. So I'm going to choose the type, which is class, and I'm going to start this with a period because all of my classes start with a period. And I'm going to name this specifically to its function, and that is of the navigation. So my class name is dot navigation, and I'm going to click OK. Now, notice that immediately over here on the right-hand side, I have a dot navigation piece sitting here now. I could continue to edit this rule and change my size, which is 16 points. Um, and in this Verdana piece, I could do, let's go ahead and do extra small here. And immediately it takes on the, that particular attribute. And notice that it also has that new font, the Verdana font. Um, I could go ahead and um, continue to manipulate that class right off of the CSS toolbar by clicking on the color swatch here as well. But I want to show you also how you can go ahead and come over here to your CSS style panel, clicking on the actual CSS style, in this case the dot navigation. Notice that right below it you can see the Verdana and the extra small, which is exactly what you're seeing here on the property inspector under the CSS area. This property inspector in terms of this particular combination of rules. For example, you can do bold, italic, left, center, right, justify some size and color pieces. It's great to get started, but it's far more powerful to go ahead and click on your navigation piece over here and come down to your style panel ruling area, clicking on the pencil to go ahead and edit that. And now you can do um, a variety of different kinds of things here, including, let's go ahead and make this a um, a green color, including doing things like um, underlining if you wanted. That's kind of redundant. You would want to do that on your navigation because you don't want to confuse your users in terms of underlining. But you could also do a background color for that very specifically. Um, 
I'm going to choose a super dark background. I could choose block attributes. I could choose box attributes, which also deal with my padding and margin. I could choose a border around that kind of thing. A lot of different things I could do in here, but I'm going to go ahead and click Apply. And now notice that I had chosen a background color of a dark green and my text colors coming in is this light green. However, notice that my hyperlinks themselves are still sitting in here as the blue. And that's predominantly because if I take a look over here in terms of my stacking, I've applied this whole thing as a class navigation, but my active links and my hover links are still above that stack, above that in the stack, and so therefore that takes precedence over all. Now if I wanted to once again um, manipulate that class, I could come over here, click on the dot navigation. Here is my background color, here's my foreground color. And quite frankly, this is not looking very good in terms of font sizes, etc. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my pencil and I'm going to change that background color to I'm going to go with a pale orange right there simply just to give some sort of highlight to the whole thing and show you what that might look like. I can go ahead and apply that and there it is. Now unfortunately my text color, that light green, looks pretty darn ugly there. In, in any case it really wouldn't matter simply because my link colors are blue and all of those are eventually going to become hyperlinks but just for the sake of showing you I could change the color there as well. Before I move forward, let's go ahead and come over here to our box attributes. Now in terms of the whole box here, I'm not ready yet to get into changing the size or shape of that box, so I don't want to necessarily touch any of the height, width, float, or clear, but perhaps I do want to change um, some attributes such as padding. And what this will do is will add some buffer space around my links. Notice how my link content is right up against the edges of that particular um, box. Now playing with padding and margins are a topic for another time but just to show you very quickly I'm going to uncheck this option for all of them mainly because I want it to line up here on the left so I don't want to fuss with the left padding but perhaps I'm going to go ahead and do one and I'm going to choose an M for, actually it doesn't really matter on the right hand side, there's nothing there. I'm going to choose an M as a value, although I could certainly choose something else. Again, a topic for another discussion, but once I click apply, now we can see that, it, that there is one M of padding between my content here and the outer edge of that particular box. And that, very quickly, is how I can apply, create a class and apply it and manipulate it. I'm going to save this as always and I'm going to go ahead and preview it just to take a quick look at what that's going to look like. And here is my page in a preview. So at this point I'm starting to build different pieces of, of information and we're moving quite a ways along. I'll see you again in a little bit.